Hey guys, welcome to this video where we are going to build a CRUD application using uh, using MongoDB and, uh, and Express. So this is going to be a guide and uh, I will explain you how you can uh, start setting up your Express application and then connect it with uh, your MongoDB uh, database. So if you don't uh, know about MongoDB, MongoDB is uh, a non-relational database, so it's different from uh, uh, SQL, MySQL, or uh, uh, Postgres, because the the data. So your uh, uh, your database is a uh, is a uh, it, it has a different configuration. It means like it's uh, going to have collections instead of tables, right? So the first thing you need to do is to head over uh, the MongoDB.com, and then you can look at you can click here on cl cloud. So they have the atlas here. And then from that point, you can say start free here and it's going to uh, ask you to sign up with uh, your Google account or like you can uh, just sign up with your work email, first name and last name. And once you sign up with your account, you will uh, be uh, logged to your uh, to your uh, account where you can create a new cluster. So a cluster is like uh, your database and then inside this cluster, you can create connections. Okay. I mean collections and then your collections are going to be like your tables uh, you need to interact or to store uh, your data so uh, after you create here your uh, uh, your MongoDB cloud account okay by going to mongodb.com so it's going to be a little bit different because uh, for me I have a new cluster but for you like you, you uh, need to create a new cluster and uh, just uh, okay say create cluster here okay so for me it's going to be like uh, not free because i already have a, a cluster but for you it's going to be free so you can just say create cluster it's going to create uh, a new cluster for you so it can take like uh, some sometime a couple of uh, minutes but uh, yeah should be should be easy to to uh, create your cluster and the next thing after you create your cluster will be to uh, look at okay your uh, network access and uh, in the network access, this is like where you will uh, allow, okay, uh, your IP address to connect to uh, your uh, your database, okay. So for that, you can just say add a IP address here, and then you can just uh, add your current IP address here and confirm, okay. So I have, I did it already. It's going to whitelist your your IP address. So this is very important. The next step after you create your cluster, right? Now the third step is to look at your database access here and you have uh, you can add a new database user okay and uh, for example here I can add a new database user give it a, a password or, or, or to generate a secure password and then this password let's say here mm, so for, for example you can say m mongo atlas okay or you can say block admin like this doesn't matter and then you need to copy uh, your password and then store it somewhere so you can uh, have access to it so I'll show you uh, how to do that so I can say add user here now this user is going to be uh, able to access okay the my account and then create okay or write uh, create new things in the database right so after you set up your uh, MongoDB uh, cloud account like this you can now go ahead and create your local uh, your local server so for that I have already here uh, just a file so I have a folder I call Express Atlas you can have yours and then create a new file with like nothing inside okay now uh, let's see what we need to install so we need uh, Express we need .env we need MongoDB and we need the uh, additional uh, packages like uh, uh, not more okay so I'm going to crack open my terminal like this and I can say npm I okay I need Express I need Mongo yes, Express so Mongo DB I need a uh, not more or not demon uh, I need as well dot env so this is like to uh, hide my credentials okay so I can submit it's going to uh, install the packages I need and while it's doing that, okay, we can uh, start our server. So we can create our server, say const uh, express 
equals so we require the express package and then we can say const app equals express like this and then you can say app that listen it's going to listen to uh, let's say 3000 and one and have a callback function that's going to just tell us that you say connected okay connected or listening to 3001 all right now after it installed the packages you can go ahead uh we should have oh okay so actually we i need to have npm i in it here that's why okay and then run the previous command so i need to you delete this one not modules then i can run it again okay so we can as well uh we'll create like a connection so this is like the file that's going to handle our connection but uh yeah so now let's see what we have in the package that json so we have these packages which is fine and uh the script so i want to have uh, a start script so start is going to say no daemon so i'm going to use node mon and app.js so i don't have to restart my server every time you can say here npm start so it starts my server and it says this is sending to 3001 so from now uh, the application here has a server and that's it okay we don't have a database from now so for that we need to connect uh, our mongodb okay like uh, our local setup with the mongodb all right so for that we need to create a new file that we will call connection.js so i'm going to have here a new file a new file so i'll call connection.js so this is going to uh, have the the connection so it's going to manage like the connection so i need mongoose so i can say const mongoose let's see if i installed it oh yeah so i need to remove this one actually install mongoose so npm uninstall so mongodb and npm i mongoose because mongoose is what i need to connect uh to my uh to my server so to my cloud atlas server All right i already have mongodb but i need mongoose like to connect with my mongodb so the mongodb is just a database now mongoose is a way for you to connect uh to uh, mongodb All right so in this case we don't need mongodb because we'll use the cloud atlas so in my connection.js here i need mongoose so i'll require mongoose like this and i need as well dot env so dot env is going to help me hide my credentials what i mean by credentials is my username and my password and uh for that okay i need to say const here i need to say uh not const but just require dot env and i need to say that config okay and this is going to help me like have my credentials hidden so my credentials are going to be in a file that i'll call that dot env file and i can put here like my credentials right so let's say here for my user i want to connect with my block admin here so i can just edit it okay and uh edit password for example auto generate secure password copy the password and here i can have mongo user equals something and mongo password so the mongo password will equal okay this password now the mongo user is going to be uh, our user we we set up so it's going to be the block admin i can just copy it so let's say here block admin and now these two uh the mongo user and in, in, in the mongo password will be accessible uh here okay by saying just process that env 
so i'll show you how to do it now the next thing is to uh, set up the connection params so these are uh, related to to uh, mongodb i mean to mongoose so connection params equals use new url parser equals true for some way like i don't really know what it does but it's kind of required so create index which is true so i can this is an object so like that and the last one is use unified topology which is true so you can look at the documentation for mongo for uh, mongoose to have more details on how uh, this works okay so now i need my uri so the, the uri is going to be uh, from it's going to come from my database so this is like how i will have access okay to uh to my database i can go to clusters and here i can i have the connect button so the connect button is going to help me okay have my application connected to the mongoose so for that i can click here con uh, connection connect choose a connection method so let's say connect your application and it's going to give me this okay uri so i can just copy it and now i can store it so i can say const uri equals okay you can put it here in backticks and then it it has like a username and a password all right so the username is this one i can say here process that env that let's say mongo user okay and the last one is the process that env so process env dot mongo password right and then it has like this um, database say that saying my first database i can say my block as a database okay it depends like it's up to you but i just call it uh, my blog all right so this is like the url you need to connect but the next thing is to set up now the connection <laughs> so to set up the connection i need to uh, create a new variable here Okay, so the variable I'll call it const connection equals okay, so I'll use mongoose the connect okay method and it takes the URI the connection params okay. Now this is uh, an asynchronous okay uh, operation, so I need to deal with that. So I'll say that then that then so when I have uh, my connection setup I can just say console.log connected okay and then if it doesn't works well if it doesn't work well I can say catch so it takes an error and I can say console.log error like this all right and, and uh, at the end I will simply export it so module that exports equals connection because we'll need to use that okay in our app that js file all right so now we set up our connection the next thing is to to uh, import it here so i can say const here db equals require okay connection so it should be that slash connection. And now if you restart the server, it's going to, uh, to to try to connect with our MongoDB. And if everything works well, we should have 
this okay say connected let's say connected to cloud atlas all right so i'm going to say npm start again So now it's trying to connect to our MongoDB. And then we have this error. So it says authentication failed. All right. So uh, there is probably like an error here in the authentication. So I look at it and I come back to you uh, when I find the solution. All right, guys. So the, the issue was that like it took some time to uh, update the password for, for the user. If uh, that that doesn't work for you, you can simply wait for uh, for some minutes, okay, for the changes to apply, or you can just uh, choose to have your own password here, okay? So you can enter your password. But uh, yeah, so uh, after that, okay, so I can show you. If I say npm start, it's going to take some time. So it's uh, an asynchronous process, and then it's going to tell me uh, that it's connected to the MongoDB Cloud Atlas. So now we are connected with uh, our database, and we can make like uh, the CRUD, the CRUD, uh, the CRUD operations. All right. So now the first thing is to uh, to create a model. So the model will be uh, like the post model because we need to have our post model set up so the post model for that we need to have a, a new file uh, and then in this new file we will have like the basically like the the model all right so here i can have post model that js and then in this post model that js we we are going to build the post model okay so for the first thing is mongoose equals require so we require the mongoose and the next thing is we will build now the schema so i can say const schema equals the mongoose so it has a schema and then this schema takes okay it takes an object so in this object this is where we build the schema so the first thing is the title okay so for the title like this the title is going to be a string oh yeah so here we need to remove this so it takes an object and inside this object so Actually, like it takes just the uh, parentheses, and then inside you will have like multiple objects. So the first one is for the title, like this. Now let's close it here. So you'll have the title, and then you'll have uh, the content. It's going to be a string as well. So you're going to make it like. Very simple, we say like it has a title and it has a content, right? So like this, another document, All right? And now the next thing, like we can have another object here. We will say timestamp, for example, and set it to true so that we have the timestamp. All right, and then now for, from the model we create, from the schema we create the, the post model. So we can say const post equals mongoose. So we say model and then create the post model and we give it our schema. All right. And now we can export. So module that exports equals post. All right. So now we built the post model and we export it. So with this, with this post model now, uh, we can. Uh, create like basically new block items right okay. all right guys so 
now we have everything uh, set up. What we need to do now is just uh, to, to uh, build our CRUD application. All right. So for that, we go to our application.js. So we'll have uh, creation, okay, update with and delete. So for that, okay, so we can say we need to require so a post model, const post model equals we say require. So we require a post model like this. And uh, yeah, and, and we need to have so app that use we need to say express URL encoded like this extended say true so to be able to receive JSON file JSON data coming from the front end of uh, the application or uh, from let's say when we use Postman to make our uh, to test our API as well we need to use express that JSON okay all right so for the CRUD applications here so I can say CRUD applications from now I can just shut down my server the first thing is to post so to post here we need to uh, say app that post okay so when we post make a post it's going to be an asynchronous request because we are posting to the cloud MongoDB cloud like that <clears throat> and then we need to uh, extract the data that's coming from uh, from the front end okay so don't forget that the post model here it has a title and a content so we need to take the title and the content coming from the from the front end and then create a new post okay so for that I'm going to extract it from the body so I can say const title content I can say coming from the body okay use this structuring here and now I'll use the try catch and this try catch is going to deal with my asynchronous operations so I can say const new post here create a new post equals so await I'm going to await the creation of a post using the post model so it has a create okay method and then I just passed pass it like the title in my content so that it creates it and when it creates it okay I need I, I can uh, send back so the response so say response that JSON and then my new post okay but if I don't get the post in this case I can just say response status 500 and then I can send the error okay so in this case now I have uh, set up my post request all right and we can test that so I can test it using postman and postman is going to allow me to uh, to test my API routes to see like uh, if it's going to uh, work as as intended basically okay so I have now postman set up and uh, we need to first start the server so let's say npm start and after that we are uh, going to send okay a new a post request to create our first uh, post so we use postman here I can say localhost 3001 okay and then here in my uh, in the body here okay so I have already like some title so let's say first title and then the content here so content for the first article and we can send the request so I'm going to send here instead of a put request I can send a post request okay and yeah so here we go so we created our first article 
So it has like the first title, the content, it has an ID auto-generated from uh, Mo MongoDB and it has like these timestamps. And then we can uh, now check our clusters and it should have a collection, a new collection that's going to be created by default. If I look at my collection now, <coughs> it's going to look at the connection, so the collection. So I have my block collect collection. Inside my block collection, I have like a list of posts, okay, with my post model. So it has like this ID title content, all right? So this is how you create uh, your first blog post using uh, MongoDB, all right? So now we can uh, continue on. So to the next one, which is to uh, to read, okay, or getting all the posts. So for that, we need to say app that get is going to be a get request as long uh, at the same time it's going to be an asynchronous so request response object and it's going to uh, now we don't need like a title or a content we just need to uh, fetch all the posts so for that we use try catch to deal with the asynchronous request you can say here const post equals so i'm going to await the post model Okay, and I can await the find method. It's going to find all the items. And then after I find all the items, I can say uh, rest.json here and send all my posts to uh, the client. And if not, I can just say, let me copy this like that. Okay, now we have uh, dealt with our get. So to get all the posts, you can test that with Postman. So for that, we just need to send the GET request. So I'm going to create another one, Let's say second title here and content for second article. So I create two articles. So I'll get, when I now send the GET request, so I'm going to send here a GET request. Okay, so I don't need to send a body. And uh, I just send the get request. So now let's see what we have. And voila, we have the ID for the first post and we have the, the next post. So if you created here additional blog posts, let's say third article. So content for the third article, I send my post request. Okay, and now I can get all the posts by sending just a GET request. And uh, now you see, this is the third article, right? And uh, as well in MongoDB, if I refresh it, now we should have the new, the new post like this, okay? So that's it for getting like all the posts. Now let's move on to getting just one post. So for that, we will we'll get the post by uh, by its ID, basically. I'll have up that get like this, and it's going to take the ID. Okay, it's going to be an asynchronous with a request and the response. And uh, yeah, so now we can extract the ID, okay, from requests.params. Okay, and then have a try catch. So the try catch here we will say const post, so single post await post model and we find by ID and we give it the ID here. Okay, and then we say request so response, I mean that JSON. So we send back the post, else we can just copy this, put it here. So to to deal with the with any errors so we can now test this route let me go back to postman so we have the id here i can choose to fetch just the first item so get paste it here remove the the body and i want to get by id so i can just put the id here send and now it gives me just the first the first post okay 
now after that uh, we can deal with uh, so we have the creating updating so I mean reading now we can deal with updating the data right so to update the data we need to send a, a patch request so you have the patch request uh, and then you have the put request okay so the difference between the patch and the put is that the put is going to uh, edit everything so we can choose to uh, to have the put request here okay so for that I can have here up that put and uh, it's going to take an ID in uh, asynchronous function with the request and the response like this okay and now I'm going to extract the ID so request the params and uh, extract okay the title and the content because I'm going to receive title and content from the user so from the request that body and I can use a try catch here so in the try catch I want to first find the post so const post await I can say post model find by ID first and then after I find it by ID so there is an update okay so there is a find by ID and update so I can say find by ID and update it takes uh, the ID and it takes an object to update so for the object I include the title and I include the content so for when I want to update it all right so if that if that works I can just send back the response so JSON post and if not I can just copy this error okay so now we can test our put request that's our put request I'm going to send a put here okay so for this first post and I'm going to give it a body like this so to change the title this is for the first post I can say let's say star here first post change changed okay so I can choose to update the title but I need as well to provide the content if I had only here the the patch and I don't give it the content it's going to update only the content but in this case because it's a put request I need to provide the content as well so I can send the request okay and uh, it's a put request let's see let's see what's going on basically so we take the request from the params and then we update okay so it should it should work let's see with this one if we can update it Ooh. Alright guys, so I had a typo here. So instead of find by ID and delete, it should be find by ID and update. Okay, so that's what that's why I was having this this now. So I need to now look at the post I'm getting now. Hopefully I didn't remove everything. Okay, so we have two posts. I want to update this one. So I'm going to paste here the ID and then send a put request and then it's going to now update it should update this data but it's not doing it uh, let's see why okay so let's see
it's giving me back the post it's not updating it let's see what's going on Let restart the server. All right, so now it's uh, updating the post. Okay, so we have the find by ID. The find by ID uh, and update. It says find one and update. Okay, they say application morning. One goes find one and update and find without using modifier set for a, a deprecated. So we can use, like I'm using the find by ID and update. So you can look at the documentation and see like why it's a find one update and find one and delete are deprecated. Okay, so the next thing is to to remove. So the, the last one, last operation is to remove or delete a post. I'm going to say app that delete here. So I can just, uh, copy what I had here because basically I'm going to I don't need the content here I need the the ID and we have the find by ID and delete and then instead of the post it's going to be now I can say delete deleted success fully and I can test now <coughs> we can choose to remove uh, the first post so i'm going to send a delete request don't need this so i can send this one okay so let's see what's going on again i have here a delete that's why so now if i send back should say you should get this response at JSON but let's see if it's deleting it so if I say get to get all my posts all right so it's not deleting it so let's see why copy paste it here and then send a delete request let's say if I restart the server mm -hmm. and now let's say I send back this delete let's see if I get all right so I'm still getting this so it's not removing it so I'm going to add, add up a different approach instead of find by ID and uh, delete I'm going to first find by ID so I need to find it by ID like that. Okay, and then I can say wait post that remove. So to remove it like that, and now let's see what we have. I have this first one. Just paste it here. Oh, not a get request. Let's say a uh, delete request. Let's say it's deleted successfully. So you can replace this one if it doesn't work for you. I don't know why it doesn't work for me, but you first find it by ID and then you remove it. And you should say delete it successfully. All right. So, and if the find by ID and delete works for you, you can just uh, keep it. All right. So, yeah, so that was it. Uh, for this video and uh, I hope you liked it you can leave your comments below if you have any questions 
and uh, I'll see you in the next one.